<laughs> Look at me with the technique on my resume. Make of dough, queen of pizza. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm a professional chef from the Institute of Color and Education, and this is a $183 pizza. Hi, I'm Bianca. I'm a home cook, and these are my $17 pizza ingredients. How did I know there'd be pineapple on this one? Whoa, don't hurt me now. Got it. It's a lot of things going on here. This is a pizza. For my pizza, I planned on making a quattro stagione, which basically means four seasons. I had some beautiful ingredients. So we have pizza, we have these ingredients, but where's my dough? For my pizza dough, I was gonna make a cold fermented crust using high gluten bread flour, yeast, some Italian mineral water, and some red wheat berries so I can mill some flour of my own. Are these like peppers or tomatoes? Something red. For my sauce, I had some whole peeled tomatoes that I jarred myself. A very nice extra virgin olive oil, basil, and some garlic. These are apricots? No, sorry, <laughs> got that. Four special ingredients that represent four seasons. Prosciutto de Parma, fresh baby artichokes, royal trumpet and chanterelle mushrooms, and fresh basil. This is a very interesting pizza. It was gonna be spectacular. This pizza was gonna blow your mind. Bianca, this is not an easy challenge, but you got this. I'm cool, I'm, I'm down for the challenge. With Bianca's recipe, I have simple ingredients. Things you'd be more likely to find in your pantry in a local grocery store. Store-bought pizza dough, marinara sauce, red onion, black forest ham, fresh basil, mozzarella, pepperoncinis, and pineapple. <sighs> Bianca's ingredients may be simple, but I think with my chef skills, I can make them better. If I had a guess, this would probably cost about 10 bucks. $17. How expensive are pineapples nowadays? So if I had to guess, this probably costs around, I'm gonna say 80 bucks. $183, Chef Frank, really? But you know, I'm gonna follow your lead. I am the grasshopper. <laughs> All right, we're kicking it off with the Quattro Stagioni Four Seasons Pizza. Not sure what that is. A Quattro Stagioni pie isn't something that Americans really know a lot about, but it's something you'll see in Italy quite often, and it's delicious. It's kind of got a little bit of all the flavors of every season. These are Chef Frank's ingredients, and as you can see, it's no recipe, there's no nothing. Not okay, Frank. Homemade dough with biga. Hopefully I'm saying it right. I'm not really sure what that is. Bianca needs to make her own pizza dough. The dough I was planning to make is cold fermented, which basically means we're gonna ferment it one time, we're gonna shape it and put it in the fridge overnight. Making this pizza dough takes a little bit of time and patience and effort. SOS, definitely we need Rose to the rescue. Hey Bianca. Hey Rose. So what are you making today? We're doing homemade dough with Bika. What is Bika? Bika. The biga is the very first thing you're gonna do before you start your dough, because it's okay. an ingredient you're gonna use to make the full dough afterwards. All you're okay. gonna do is take equal parts flour and water with just a little bit of yeast. Just mix it till it comes together. It's gonna be pretty shaggy looking. Let it rest as long as you can. Got it. So I also have these wheat berries here, Rose. You're gonna take the wheat berries and you're gonna add them to the hopper on a mill. Flour's gonna shoot out a spout. It's delicious. Now, how do we make this dough? You're just gonna take flour, water, yeast, a little bit of olive oil, salt, and then you're gonna take the viga and add it to that and you're gonna mix everything together <laughs> and you're going to let it ferment or prove as we say. You're gonna be so good, Bianca. Yay! Thanks Yay. for the vote of confidence. <laughs> Lot to do, but I am ready to go. Let's start with the dough. <laughs> Kicking it off with the bika. We got some organic flour, mineral water from the lakes of Italia, and yeast. Boom. Now we're just gonna stir. Bianca's recipe expected me to make this on a pizza stone, but I have a different idea. I'm using a cast iron skillet. Chef Frank, you're making a pizza. What's your problem, are you crazy? If you don't have a pizza stone, this is the next best thing. I am personally a big fan of grandma pies. It's a square pie, has a crispy kind of oily crust cooked in a pan. I think I'm kind of getting there. Like I am leveling up. 
and I'm going to cover it with some saran wrap. And now let our Vega sit. Bianca gave me a store-bought pizza dough, and there's no shame in this. I've used it many times, but the way that we treat this and work with it, we can make it a little bit better. Olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna be milling flour. Here we have some wheat berries. So I've been told this is gonna be a little loud. And then I'm just gonna take my dough and I'm just gonna turn it out into my pan. Get a little of that oil on your hands and we're just gonna press the dough, kind of stretch it as far out to the sides as you can. And it's gonna keep on bouncing back. We wanna make sure we don't stick our fingers through the dough either. It still hasn't reached all the edges, but that's okay. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cover with a little saran wrap. Let it sit for about an hour and then we'll come back to it. Okay, that was very loud. All right, so we're passing it through the sieves. Chef Frank, you told me we were making pizza. You did not say we was gonna be in the gym tonight. All right, so the flour is milled and now I'm ready to make my own dough. Ooh, it's heavy. Okay, so I've never used a standing mixer before. So many new things. 150 grams of water, olive oil, add the yeast, salt, flour, and our milled flour. The mysterious beaker has been uh, sitting out in room temperature for a while. It weirdly smells like alcohol. Okay. Wow, look at this. Woo. And let's give it a go. Watch it doing its thing. I love when things do what they're supposed to do. But it smells like banana bread. So now I'm gonna try the window pane test that Rose mentioned. You know that it's done when you take a little pinch of it, hold it up. If it stretches and doesn't break and you can see through it, that means you have enough gluten development, your dough is kneaded properly. So we see the light through the dough. Do I see the light? Do you see the light? This is good enough for me. Before we put it in the bowl, we wanna add a little olive oil so it doesn't stick. I think my dough is ready to rest. Bianca will know the dough is done. When she opens it up, it'll have kind of like a slightly beer-like smell to it. We'll see some bubbles underneath the surface and the dough should be slightly soft. It shouldn't be really firm because when she flattens it out and rolls it out, we don't want it to be too tight so that every time she stretches it, it springs back. Now we're gonna <laughs> Nope. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna like <sighs> nicely just take it out. <laughs> Mmm, smells good. But now we're gonna slice the dough in half. So we got our two halves of dough. Okay, I think this is good. Another slap for good luck. Pouring the olive oil on the pan. I'm gonna pop these into the fridge. I'll be RB. Bianca gave me a jarred tomato sauce. It says fresh garlic. I'm gonna make the sauce. Never use this. I don't think I've even seen one of these things before. But cheers to new things, right? I always find with jarred sauces, they usually are really heavy on kind of the spices. Definitely a little on the sweet side. It's not horrible, it's actually pretty good. But I wanna try and make it a little bit better with some of the ingredients that I have floating around. So I'm just gonna turn my heat kind of on medium. So we're gonna put a little olive oil in the pan. Let me get my onion and I'm just gonna give it a slice and we're gonna throw this into the pot. I'm gonna hit these with a little salt, draw out some of the moisture, and I'm gonna cook these until they're translucent. Basically, I'm sweating them out. I got a couple of pepperoncinis. I'm sure there's an Italian out there holding their ears. It hurts, stop. And these will give a nice acidity, and I'm just gonna take the stem off and give these a nice rough chop, leaving the seeds and everything in there. The seeds in these peppers are really soft, so I'm not too worried about them. There's not a lot of heat here. It's more for like that vinegary, acidic flavor. I'm just looking to see that the onions start to go translucent. Right now, they're still pretty firm. I want them to start getting a little salt. So that's why we added the salt. It's gonna draw some of the moisture out. Some tomatoes that actually Frank sent over. So I'm gonna be putting the tomatoes into the food meal. All right, so you're gonna start by... We're gonna put it into work today. Okay. Actually, I need to take a break. Yeah, I'm gonna take the sauce and it's going in. It's gonna splatter, so be careful. This isn't gonna cook for long. Salt, give it a nice grating of black pepper, fresh cracked. Don't use that dry stuff in the jar, it's dead. We really don't need them to be super reduced. So we're pretty much done. We're gonna get all this luscious tomato, some garlic, some salt, pepper. Go crazy with the pepper, okay? Flavor is love. And now the last thing we wanna do is I'm gonna shut my heat off. 
and I'm gonna get some really nice pieces of basil in there, right? Tear the leaves in half and put a fair amount in there. Basil's gonna give us this beautiful herbal note. I like to go a little overboard with the basil here just to make this taste like we made it fresh. <sighs> the basil infusing with the garlic. I'm not even cooking the basil. I'm just kind of like steeping it like tea. Mm. Already better. Okay, it's not bad. It looks pretty, yeah? This is my pretty sauce. That's my sauce. I'm gonna let it cool down. And once it is, we'll be ready to assemble. I made it to the toppings. And we're starting it off with artichoke. Dang, which season is the artichoke? Is it fall? Is, when, is it spring? <laughs> So it's pineapple time. And to be honest with you, I've never really thought much about pineapple on pizza, but everyone that I talked to said it's absolutely delicious. So normally when you have a pineapple pizza, there's something salty there, ham, bacon, but you definitely need something salty to counteract the sweetness on the pineapple. So I'm gonna take it just a step further and get our pineapple a little more acidic. First thing I'm gonna do is cut my pineapple. I take the top and the bottom off. And now I'm just gonna peel it with my knife. If there's any kind of dark spots, you can cut them out. I'm gonna cut this straight down the center, lay it flat, cut it again. And then I take the core out. Now the core you can eat, it's totally edible. It just tends to be a little fibrous, so I'm not gonna use it for this. And I'm just gonna cut it into kind of like medium sized chunks. I don't want this to be too big so that it overpowers, but I also don't wanna be too small so you don't recognize what it is. I love pineapple, I think it's delicious. When I was a kid, I used to eat so much that my tongue would get fuzzy. First things first, we want to cut the lemon and put the lemon in the water to stop the artichoke from turning brown. Start to peel, I think. Are we peeling? Then you're gonna tear the outer leaves off. It gets a little bit lighter in color, like it's a light green. If the artichoke is small enough and tender enough, all you have to do at that point is cut it lengthwise into quarters. We have our artichoke, we cut them in fours and you wanna immediately dunk them into the lemon water. And I'm gonna just cut our onion into dice. Put that on top. So my artichokes have been chilling in the lemon water. We're gonna dry them off before we saute them. Ooh, don't need too much garlic. I'm gonna take the brine from my pepperoncini, get it warm, or get it hot, really. I'm gonna hit my pineapple and onion mix with a little bit of pepper, just a touch of salt. And I'm doing this pickling process first because I wanna give the pineapple time to kind of marinate. So I'm just gonna take this brine and pour it over the top. Give it a good mix, and then I have a little bit of plastic wrap. And the plastic wrap is gonna help hold some of the heat in. It's time for one o'clock. Slowly though, slow. Mm. I'm gonna add too much salt. I think my artichokes are done. Bianca one, pizza zero. <laughs> Bianca sent me some Black Forest ham. It's a smoky deli ham. I'm gonna take this ham, I'm gonna put it in the oven and let it dry out so it gets crispy. And then I'm gonna crumble it on top. It's gonna give us a little more of a salty pop. It concentrates the flavor of the ham and it'll give us a little bit of crispiness. But I feel like having the sheet tray there helps heat it up all the way through. We're not just getting heat from the bottom, we're getting heat from everywhere to dry this. I'm gonna put this in the oven, 300, 325, until it's crisp. Topping two, mushrooms, trumpet and chanterelle. Ooh, I love how this knife cuts. Bianca, for the mushrooms, I want you to saute them until they're nice and brown. This is one of the things that people don't do with mushrooms. They'll throw them all into a pot and they bubble away and they kind of boil and then they get brown. You're gonna put in some oil. We're gonna start the mushrooms browning and then we'll throw our shallots in. We'll throw our butter and thyme in just to kind of give it the flavor at the end. Oh, this smells awesome. Pepper. This is looking delectable, sensational. Topping two. So we're back with our dough. It has rested in the pan. It's kind of gone nice and soft. When you bake pizza in a pan like this, a lot of times if you don't par bake it, the crust doesn't get crispy on the bottom before the toppings are really dark. All I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this oil here, get it on my hands. I'm not gonna push it down really hard, 
gently ease it to the side of the pan. I want to leave any of the bubbles there that we got. You can see I got a bubble there, I got a bubble there. You can see now, because we let it rest at room temperature in the pan, it's holding really nice and tight to the sides. I take a little bit of my sauce, and I'm not gonna go crazy with the sauce here. I'm gonna go almost up to the edge. The sauce will kind of like hold this down a little, not so much to make it like chewy, and the crust will puff up a little more if there's no sauce on it. I have my oven on at about 4, 420. We're gonna throw it in there, seven to 10 minutes. Stop bugging me about the times. I am back with my dough that's been sitting in the fridge for quite a while. All right, Bianca, this is how you hand stretch a piece of pizza dough. I have my dough on the table, and I'm gonna to liberally flour it. So I'm not going to use a rolling pin. I'm going to use my fingers. Go around the edge until we have kind of a lump in the middle. I'm going to draw it out. I'm pushing down and I'm kind of pulling the dough and opening it up. Get it on the back of your hands now. We don't want to get any pointy fingers. We're using the backs of our knuckles, but you want to try and get this as thin as possible on the backs of your knuckles. If you want to throw it in the air, you can throw it in the air. Oh no. Hey, I can't even do the knuckle trip. Come on, though. So if you happen to get a little tear in there, Bianca, what I do is I just dust off all the flour and I'm gonna just pinch it over on itself so you can patch it up. And then we can put it onto our pizza peel, sauce it, top it, throw it in the oven. Look at me with the technique <laughs> on my resume. Make of dough, queen of pizza. I feel a little tingle in my chef sense that my part cooked dough is ready to go. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So you can see that my dough is cooked, right? Because when I push down on it, it bounces back. If it wasn't done, I push down on it, it would leave a dent, but it doesn't have a ton of color on the bottom yet. I took it out so that when I want to finish cooking this pizza, I can throw the pan in the oven with a little more oil, get it really hot, and when I put that pizza in there, I'm gonna get a beautiful brown crispy crust. All about timing. I have all my ingredients. Let's do it. That, that feels right. So this is our ham garnish. It looks a little dark, so let me taste a piece. It's super crispy, but it's not burnt, and that's what I want. I want it to be super crispy. I think it's right on the money. Ooh, for the mozzarella. Kind of like evenly distribute the cheese as much as possible. Most people don't realize there's a right way and a wrong way to grate cheese, and I'm gonna show you the right way. So we have our mozzarella. Our mozzarella should be chilled. We wanna make sure that it, doesn't fly all over the place. <laughs> Make sure you do it onto a tray or into a plate. You lay it down and you push. This way you're using less muscles. You're using your body more efficiently to grate this cheese. Anything else is unacceptable. If there's any big pieces, those are your snack pieces. That's our grated knots. Let's get our pizza. This pizza looks awesome. It's nice and airy. I can tell that it's gonna get crispy. Look at all those nice bubbles. I'm gonna put a little more sauce on. Not a ton. Just hit those dry spots right there. We'll get our mozzarella. Don't be stingy with the mozzarella. Try and go all the way out to the edges. Time to make our four season quadrants. So first we're gonna start off with the artichoke, which I believe represents fall. God damn it. Which I believe represents spring. <laughs> so these guys are pretty big, so we don't wanna use too many of them. These fragrant uh, mushrooms, which represents fall. <laughs> Topping three, the prosciutto, which represents spring. Which represents winter. So the last quadrant is actually summer and that is represented by basil. But we're gonna put that all over the pizza after we take it out the oven. You're gonna taste good. You're gonna taste amazing. We have a winner. And now we will put our pineapple. Make sure you drain it really well. We also don't want to overcrowd this too much because you know we want to get a couple of bites of pineapple here and there, but we don't want it to overpower. We're going to take some of those onions as well. Remember, we pickled this into pepper juice, so they should have some really nice pepperoncini flavor. Just a touch more cheese, just to kind of stick those pieces of pineapple on there so the cheese melts around them. The toppings are on my pizza. The next step is to get my hot cast iron pan out of the oven. So I want you to be really careful. You see how it's a little smoky? That's good. We're going to take a little more oil and we take this whole pizza and we drop it in. Oh, you hear the sizzle? And it goes right back in the oven. And all we do is wait until it's melty and crispy and delicious. Okay, Frank, don't kill me, but I had to just make a little addition 
and add some more Parmesan cheese. <laughs> and now for the basil. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil. So here we have it, guys. Chef Frank's four season pizza. I'm impressed. Oh yeah. Look at that. Let's flop it out onto our board. Look at how beautiful it is. Our crust is super brown and crispy on the bottom. Cheese is all melty. We wanna wait before we cut it. We wanna let it cool just a little because if we cut it right now, all this topping just kind of slides off. But we still have to add the rest of our toppings. So I'm gonna take some of that ham, just gonna break it up. And that's gonna be our nice salty component, okay? A little bit of basil, just tear our leaves. Don't go too crazy, just like nice little splashes of green there. And then a little bit of olive oil on top. All we gotta do is wait for it to cool just a little and then we can serve a slice. Look at that. That is Instagram worthy. Time to cut this pizza. The pizza wheel tends to kind of drag everything along, especially when you have larger toppings like the pineapple. So I'm not gonna use it. I'm using the chef knife. You can hear the crunch of the crust there. Look at that, super airy, nice and brown and crispy on the bottom. I'm going in. Mm. I have to say the pineapple works. With everything that's going on here, it tastes delicious. The cheese is super creamy. The sauce has a little bit of acidity and basil flavor to it. And the pineapple doesn't overpower. You get a little crispy crunch of that ham. Look at that. Mm. I've made a lot of pizzas in my life. I'm gonna say this is in the top six or seven. I can't wait to see how Bianca did with my recipe. I'm going to cut the quadrants. Here we go. You hear that? That's that crunch. It made me too crunchy. This prosciutto portion looks real good. Mushrooms look real good. The basil is looking kind of sad over here, but I'm gonna eat it anyway. And here we have the artichoke. That's how you know it's good because I'm quiet. I think my favorite is between the prosciutto and the mushrooms. Like, I don't even think I can decide. But the shallots and the mushrooms, perfection, sensational. So I'm wondering what Frank did with my pineapple pizza. Hey Frank, how goes it? Hi Bianca, how's everything? How'd it go? You have me here for hours on end. <laughs> I love the pizza. The mushrooms, yum. The prosciutto was great. The sauce, so good. Like you sent over those tomatoes. So you want to check it out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you took a bite of each season. Yes. That looks great. That crust looks phenomenal. I'm proud of you. You did great. Oh, yay! Oh, Chef Frank <laughs> is proud of me. Did you hear that, guys? I can't say that I'm a fan of pineapple on pizza. It works. It works. It works. Yes. I enjoyed it, and Thank I'm glad you. you have a glass of wine. Yes. I'm sure you've worked hard today. You deserve I it. Worked. Cheers to pineapples, and also cheers to patience. You did great. It looks beautiful. Thank there you. There you go. You get a round of applause. A round of applause. Two thumbs up. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks again, Frank.